Hey guys, Jay Sensational here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are again continuing our journey from the blast from the past. Today, another very, very old classic. We had Draven Sion, we had Draven Ezreal. Finally, we are coming all the way back to Thresh Nasses. Um, again, I do want to iterate from these past few videos if you have been keeping up. The reason why I am playing these decks and showcasing to you guys is because I do think they're good. But let's talk about why again they're good. Um, it's really because of, again, the board-centric meta. Um, a lot of decks right now are playing for board. A lot of the decks are going wide on board, relying on the board to focus on damage. You don't really see the decks like feel the rush around in the meta that much. And so being able to fight for board is super, super important. And I think there is very few decks that did it quite as well as Thresh Nasus. It was one of the most explosive board decks uh, comboing off of the curse keeper being able to use this as a sack target in order to get an escaped abomination off of cards like ravenous butcher or right of calling to basically get a two mana uh, four two that at the same time counts as a slay and buffs up cards like a nasus or even like a bakai reaper on board um with addition of cards like vile feast black spear merciless hunter bakai sandspitter we're able to take advantage of using the vulnerable keyword um, because we do have a very solid mid or early game, we're able to summon three twos, four twos, four twos, uh, fearsomes, and all these other units that can not only help us trade down our opponent's board, but we also have a bunch of chump blockers like the vile, the spiderling off the vile feast in order to pull aside units and push damage just through tempo. And of course, we have a really strong finisher with cards like Thresh and Nasus against all these board based decks. You can use Thresh to sort of challenge away some of the key backline units such as like Vandal City Mayor or the Gleaming Lantern and things like that. And at the same time it makes your opponent's attacks difficult because if they're attacking into you and then love helping you level up your Thresh, you then get to pull out a really buffed up Nasus and this just starts to continue trading down the board. They're forced to block this almost every turn. If it levels it then it debuffs your entire opponent's board. And then if they go too low, you just have Atrocity on a Spell Shield Nasus. And again, these board-based decks, like Scouts, like the Fey Swarm, um, like the Silver Auction, they can't deal with a Spell Shield Nasus. And uh, having the ability to toss it into the face for 10-15 damage is often a very good way at closing out the games. So again, um, we have a lot of these board-based decks returning, and I do see Thresh Nasus serving as a little bit of a fun, but also a viable sort of way to sort of Come back and answer the meta there are a bunch of flex slots in this deck that i'm sure can be you know jostled around depending on what you face um this version i took from my friend what am i he has playing one ride negation one withering whale one vengeance um one bakai sand spinner uh, you know one preservarium one minion these could easily be all sorts of different kinds of cards um but the main sort of like key is having this sort of curse keeper this butcher this bakai reaper early game because you can go wide really, really fast, really, really early on and just start applying a lot of early pressure and damage to your opponent. By turn two, you could have like uh, eight power representing on board off of a Bakai Reaper, off of Curse Keeper, off of Jagged or Ravenous Butcher. And now you're just suddenly dealing a lot of damage to your opponent, where then Atrocity on even like an eight damage Nasus can often not close out the game. Again, not many decks have the actual ability to actually deal with Atrocity plus Gnosis outside of cards like Darkness, um, SI, Prowyard, or like the SI PNZ decks. And you kind of just get to roam around free with a lot of unit based decks and things like Thresh to sort of farm and just cycle through your deck. So this deck was definitely a lot of fun if you guys did enjoy it in the past. Um, it, this might be the time to pick it up because, you know, in the past season since. Uh, it was sort of king of the meta and got a bunch of nerfs. It definitely fell out of favor, and now it's coming back a little bit more. So if you guys haven't been enjoying the Blast from the Past, you guys definitely love this one. So give it a try. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. But I'll leave you guys with the games. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out, and take care. I saw Jordan, aka Mr. What Am I, post this list, and I'm intrigued to at least try it out. Will you learn how to juggle? <laughs> what? No. Why would I do that? I think I want to learn how to juggle. What the? <laughs> what year is this? What? 
Is J Slex good? I think J Slex is a pretty good deck. Slaxer's not bad, honestly. I'll try it out. Okay. It's a counter matchup? Is this a counter matchup? Doesn't Thresh Nasus beat Ash? I don't think this is a counter. I just need to be like a little bit careful around reckoning. It's tempting. Like we just beat them down early game and they just can't heal, right? Like we just deal a nice, you know, six damage to them. like dishing out the damage you know this hand's a little bit awkward i would love to develop that's not true you could reckoning me i do not want to develop <laughs> oh my god can you imagine i played merciless into reckoning Woo! i mean, it would never hear the end of it oh man that reckoning was <laughs> that reckoning was staring me dead in the eye oh man i mean he's at seven health what's he gonna do Hi, Ash. Good thing I have ride negation. This game should be over with this right. Like, he has no way of getting a reckoning off. So it's fine. Fun at playing around stuff? Yeah. Turns out that's pretty good, huh? We just do this so we have a way to pull the LeBlanc. And if he ever taps under 6 mana, we can play the Merciless. Actually, we should just like Biofeast it instead. But in case he plays like a 1 health unit, which this deck does have a decent amount of, I can Biofeast that instead. Aha! I'm good at the game. We're still almost losing. We're not like... We're not losing, but... <laughs> oh my god. I'm losing out on so much if I don't develop. He doesn't have a second reckoning, right guys? I'm not gonna respect the second reckoning, no sir. I don't respect it enough. There's no- there's no- there's no shot. No shot you have a second reckoning. Absolutely no shot. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> is, he, is he just pre-shedding me into developing? There's no way, right? <laughs> oh my god. Is he, is he just politely shedding me? Or is he just like getting in my head? I think he's like some mega mind. It's like a giga... Giga Brain Mega Chad. So I'm gonna take the attack. If he has a Harsh Winds, he doesn't die this turn, sure. Can you redeem player deck? Yeah. Got yeah, the points for it. Alright, Calamity, that's what you got, buddy. Is Ash Reckoning good into BC and Demacia decks? Yeah. Typically you should be good into those two pairs. But you're just bad into so much stuff, it's not really worth playing that. It's like, if you want to beat Battle City and Demacia, you could play like... Pantheon. And be better into a lot, other a lot of other things as well. There's just like not much reason to play specifically Ash unless you know unless you of course like playing it then I'm not gonna hold you back. Benny Bennett. I don't know how to say that word. You shouldn't feel like too bad if you're like losing with it because like 
generally like the Noxus sort of control cards beat up on Demacia. Obviously that's not like a one size fits all thing, but like their deck is made to remove units and your deck is made to put units on the board. So like stuff like that happens, but like without like knowing exactly what happens, it's sort of hard to tell. I know again that wasn't very good of an answer, but I just want to make sure I have Vengeance for if Nami comes down. I think 4 damage there is quite big. Alphys is not a bad draw. We can go Curse Keeper into Leech. And suddenly we're just pushing a huge amount of damage. I wish I had a Curse Keeper here so I wouldn't have to play the Leech. Sort of just racing him here, like even plays Nami. Uh, I don't know if he's fast enough. Get a Tross, I feel a little bit better. But maybe I shouldn't have kept Vengeance and Mulligan. He could also just red card me, and that would feel bad. Should have thought about this a little bit more, but but uh, I don't think open attack was better. It's like he just mystic shots this, and then my game plan sort of ruined. He has like red card into like mystic shot i just really cry Ooh, cycling let's go really good outcome like, that was like the ideal sort of scenario for us needing him needing to like commit resources it's interesting he didn't just like it's the ignition but i guess he wanted to like find tf i think reasonably we can say from his hand he doesn't have twisted fate how did oh he played the poor that's cute so recently from his hand, we say he doesn't have Twisted Fate, because otherwise he would have just slammed that. No thinking. And now we even got like a stress testing out of him, so his TF combo is just slightly worse. We can Mystic Shot this, but then again, we're just sort of pressuring him here. He still needs exactly- now it's just like checking if he has Nami in his hand. Nossus is growing nicely, he's down 7 health. We have Immersus, we have Black Spirit. Like, if Nami comes down on a board and we can just Black Spirit, that's really big. Ooh, okay. Thinking too, Nami's not gonna flip unless they have a thingy. And by thingy, I mean Flash of Balloons. We do this to deny him the Nami plus spell. And now if he wants to play Nami, he can just Merciless under it. This denies us the Glimpse plus Black Spear opportunity onto the Nami. But I think controlling his units is a little bit more important here. Being able to slam Nasus next turn is so big. Like he plays Nami here, we merciless it, and then we slam Nasus and go after it. That's really insane. It's like, what does he do now? He could easily have Nami plus Flash, but now he just has no units to buff up, potentially. Yep. Very commanding position so far. And there's the Flash. I think from his perspective, he should have played Nami first, and then he could have played the Poro and then the Flash. So he still has a Burble Fish at least, so he has a unit to play. But now his Nami is potentially dead next turn. Oh, he doesn't even commit the spell. Interesting. His Nami is like dead next turn to the Nasus. Stress defense was cute. He finally drew a TF, and then he has gold card, and might lose. We know he doesn't have TF on turn 4. What? Are you... Are you... 
I don't... If he has a Mystic Shot now, I'm gonna, like, lose it. You have a Mystic Shot, buddy? I swear to god. If you have another Mystic Shot, I will be mad. Fuming. He... No, no, no. I'll think. Oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Alright. We'll, we'll deal with that. Scrap shot my ass. Okay, Trosty. We're getting there. We just need two more, three more slays, and then Atrocity just ends the game. So we're quite close. This is one, this is potentially two, this is potentially three. So ideally we win on turn nine. Even if he has the attack token, any attacks are playing lethal, the Atrocity should just finish him off. Unless he hits like... Okay, so here, here's what he could do. He could play Flash of Brilliance, he hits Hextech Anomaly, and then Hextech Anomaly gives him Vengeance or Mini Morph. His line is so thin, but let's not discount the possibility. I'm just gonna Vengeance this, honestly. Or I can just slam Gnosis. Oh, interesting. Okay, we can even Black Spear here. Like, Black Spear would kill this anyways now. Also really good. So this is... 8. Gnosis <sighs> attacking next turn is 9. And then this file face is hopefully 10. We're getting there. It's so funny now, he has a dead card here. <laughs> His card is a Snapple Storm that he can never play this game. I definitely should not have kept the Vengeance. Looking back, I could see how in this sort of game plan, Vengeance was not the card I needed. But while I was thinking about it, it actually seemed alright. You can't do this. You can't do this. You also can't let this connect because of atrocity. But you should know it's. He's on a very tight block anyways. Oh, okay. Alright, we win. We need 7 burn. Uh -uh. Alright, show me. He needs Flash of Brilliance. That's like the only card that's just out here. Oh, he hit the Flash of Brilliance. Uh, he hit the flash brilliant. I think that blue card would have hit him in the flash, and then he actually had an out there. So hilarious. Oh, um, er, I was gonna do some learning point there. There was something you could have learned out of that if he had happened to have flash brilliance in that hand. I guess I'll just say it now. So. Say he had Flash of Brilliance in his hand, and then he played Flash of Brilliance, right? Let's assume that happened. Um, and then suddenly, if we atrocity the Nasus, there is a potential, a very slight potential, he could find an out to that and fizzle our atrocity, where we might actually lose the game. So, unless we are dying that turn, which was a little bit unlikely based off his board, he didn't have the elusives for it. There's no reason to commit to the atrocity that turn. We can just instead attack the falling turn, pressure the Gnosis level up, pressure his health total so he's forced to block everything, 
He's forced to respect Gnosis because once Gnosis levels up, then he has no way of dealing through the spell shield, right? And then we have a free atrocity. Or he has to commit something on our attack onto the Gnosis, and then we can be reactive with our atrocity instead. So that's like, uh, I think that's a nice fundamental way of playing around removal. It's just that, you know, you have to be reactive to it and commit it when after they commit their thing, right? Ugh. This is not the <laughs> this is not the place to be playing Thresh Nosis, huh? It's plat? Okay, my bad. I don't think I should be playing this deck right now. As fun as this deck is. You have a really explosive hand though if you can find the right card. Like we hit a if we hit like a curse keeper, we just pop off. It's not a curse keeper. Fading icon? Oh these cards are so bad. I take this pass because if I somehow set like a Vile Feast Butcher Black Spear this turn, I maybe can push some damage. So the attack token is more valuable to me than sort of just going in there. So now I can like Vile Feast this, I can Jag Butcher and then Black Spear and then try to push damage. Whereas if I attack and I push one, then what am I doing this turn? If he glimpses, that's gonna suck. If it's not glimpse, that's good. We're just like all in here. We just like pray they have nothing. If they have like a... That sucks. It's worth pushing three and losing my Butcher Reaper, probably. Yeah, unfortunate. Like we're just out of stuff to do now and we probably lose. Like, our start was just a little slow, unfortunately. Win. He attacks, I get a glimpse block. This is not very good. We've drawn zero champions, and that's gonna cost us. We can't glimpse because of Vile Feast. And so we're very reliant on drawing some very specific cards here. Fading Icon is not one of them. She waits for me beyond the midst. I need a glimpse block again this turn. I just need to start cycling through my deck and trying my best to find something that can win me the game. This denies him from having a mark for the Kindred. It's not good enough, Thresh. Take the three damage. Yo, Ghost Matters, what's up, buddy? I didn't know. I could have glimpsed, or like glimpsed that, but that actually dealt damage to his face. And I think that's slightly more important. Nasus? He's almost there. It is Viego, though. I have very little idea of what I'm gonna do there. Ugh. Where's my vile feast, man? Wanna hear a fun interaction? Sure. 
you got? Second Gnosis, okay. We might be able to outgrind him. It's close. Like, playing Gnosis is so rough because he could just, like, kill one of his own units and then suddenly gets to mark my Gnosis. Still in a little bit of a pickle here. I still have Riot up, which is really good. Like, having the Riot Negation is huge. It also makes his attack kind of awkward. Like, he doesn't have a good attack here, otherwise, like, potentially level up Nasus. Like, his attack sucks. He shouldn't have played both of these. Oh, wow. He's trying to clock me dead. Respect. Disposition, yeah, like the Disposition J4 deck. I did see that if you are referring to that. So he could twin. Do I care? I think the upside is too high. Like I get a trade and I have a second Nasus. He has exactly twin, that's the only way to save it, right? He goes to 8. No. This goes to 8. Twin actually saves it. It's a little bit sketchy. Uh, but my Nasus survives. Let's attack without twin. Or Cinco. If he like vials here, he could vile feast here as well. I might even use the bright negation just to kill my own unit. Yeah. Oh, but this marks my Nasus and Oh wait, either way my Nasus getting marked? Okay, I just have to do this. I was so scared that I got, like, screwed there. Aha! Alright, bye Vega. He almost had the answer. The downside is my Nasus is at, like, what, 2 health? It's not a lot to work with. Herbal fish disposition. <laughs> Funny words you're saying. I have the siphoning strike, so that's sort of like my one up. I actually get an attack here because the Nasus gets to trade up one here. I do have a second Nasus at the worst case scenario. Control with kindred and dragons. Alright, now I just redraw Nasus. It's fine. We're chilling. We're chilling. I kind of want to play some Zillia Nasus again. Oh, I wanted I wanted a V8 or thingy there. I can't believe you're gonna win this. Why would you be doubting me? When was I gonna lose this game? At what point in this game was I losing? Honestly. Honestly. Like when was I losing this game? At what point was I behind? That's probably a false statement, but... We're still not in the best spot. If he has like a Vile Feast Vengeance onto the Nasus, still not quite lethal. But he needs some very specific set of cards to deal with me here. And if his Nasus touches him, he's dead. Well, far, like, deny. But we don't need to commit this until, you know, we need to. I 
on withering well? Oh yeah, the beginning of the game. I did think I was losing. Right, right. I can't... Yeah, I, I don't know how I won this one. Kind of wild. Darkness. This matchup seems horrendous. Like, absolutely... Like, actually just unwinnable. We'll see, though. We'll make our best of it, I suppose. So cleanly answer their champs. But right now... I don't have a blocker for the issue is I don't have a block for the catalyzer, which makes me keeping Curse Keeper a little bit sketchy. Curse Keeper is so good if we hit it, right? We do hit it, but he gets first action. This is honestly a little bit dangerous if he has catalyzer here. I just pray he doesn't. Damn. Yeah, we got really punished for that, unfortunately. Uh, I it can't really be helped there, unfortunately. That just sucks. Because I have the Merciless Hunter, I can actually use the Blacksburg this turn for just like a tempo play. I'll go the Butcher onto here, and then the Blacksburg onto here. So this not only denies him another proc of the Darkness, but it allows me to just go really wide and start to push damage. Because like now he's tapped out of everything, right? You get, like file feast, I suppose that's pretty good. But um again, this is only possible because we have the merciless. Because then I could merciless his Vagar next turn. And now we're still liable of dealing six damage. Maybe even seven. Looks like seven. Because now if he plays Vagar, it's actually kind of dangerous for him. This is still pretty good too, because again, we gotta push 8 damage here. So insane. I'm actually even gonna play Thrush too. Mm, 2 mana darkness sucks there. Have you shot the tank yet? I am not sure what that means. Perhaps you can enlighten me there. sucks now if he has Vagar, because then, like... Oh. This? God. So crazy just gets a slam Vagar like that. Because I... Mm. There's a tank on the road. Yeah, this sucks now. Like, I would have loved to have the Mercis for that, but I don't know if I could have passed last turn either. I have one right of negation I use to try to save my Thrash, but it's not leveling yet, and that's a little bit scary. Four mana darkness, too. He's getting really close. There's a tank on the road. I didn't, oh my god, that's brutal. Like, I need to deny this darkness. It makes my life easier, I suppose. Four things die if he double attacks. He can't double attack. I'm not gonna reveal this just in case he attacks with two things. If he attacks with one extra thing, he loses this game. Smart player. Because now I am two off. Like, sure, I'll be able to deny this darkness, but I don't have a way of leveling my Thrush here. And that's going to lose me the game, unfortunately. You're back. Welcome back. This game uh, has definitely not gone the way I needed it to be going. I can't level Thrush either like that. It's sort of unfortunate. No, we'll save this in case we can level Thrush. Like if we hit another sack unit. I'm supposed to just play an Asus, huh? We can only have a one Vengeance at this exact point. 
And we sort of need to take advantage of the fact that 6 health. Make use of the fact we have Atrocity. So unless he has like, exactly Senna here... Like, Senna would be backbreaking, because his 1 mana darkness just starts to deal with everything. He even gets to kill my Gnosis here, and he gets to kill my Thrush. So Senna is the one card I do not want to see here. Vengeance onto Thrush is probably okay. He Vengeance's Gnosis, he like screws up big time. Because then I could simply just wing and then pull a second Gnosis out. So I'm a little bit confused on what this is. Okay, just Vengeance Thrush, makes sense. I can level Gnosis here. And now I can throw an Atrocity. This is actually really good. This suddenly became a pretty decent position. Actually, that's not true. I'm one off. Ah, I'm bad at math. Oof. I'm bad at math. Damn, I really thought I had it there. Oops. This would beat Biofeast Smile. If he taps under a certain thing, we just have Atrocity as well, so we're still in a pretty okay spot. Just need I just lose to exactly mini morph. Maybe like Vengeance plus Whale next turn. He needs like a combination of cards here. Like if he plays Senna, he loses, I think. That's not true because Darkness deals six, seven. It's tough. We'll see. I should have took the pass there, I think. I should have took the pass, because then I'm threatening the level. Uh, yeah, I should have took the pass. Oh, silly. Oh, interesting. Okay. So, like, he needs Whale plus Vengeance. He needs Vengeance and then Whale. Oh, is he committing both on stack? Unless he has, like, Mini Morph here. Follow. Damn. How do you deal with Swain Go Hard? Uh. If you're playing like an aggro deck, that's just like a bad matchup for you. So you need to like try to play around the removal. I'm sorry, that's not a very clear answer. It definitely helps if I knew what deck you're playing. Right of Calling can find me a second Gnosis. Okay. I'm thinking I rip an Atrocity here. Because then I can still play Gnosis this turn. So like, even if he vengeances me here, I can still replay Gnosis and then throw an attack. Yeah, this is fine. Sort of. This is like, weirdly fine because I have a second Atrocity. But if I played right before the Atrocity, I can't replay Gnosis this turn. That's to say, if I draw Gnosis, it's a 50-50 to hit Thresh, and if I hit Thresh, I just lose. But we always- oh my god, that deals 9? Oh my lord. Right, we always hit Gnosis here, right guys? I need you guys to like, just hit Gnosis for me. <laughs> Alright, I guess we lose. Alright, I need you to top deck Gnosis right now. Alright, so that's going to be it for the video. Um, thank you guys so much for making it to the end. Uh, if you did, please comment down below, I love Thrash Gnosis. Or maybe you don't, so I guess you would comment, I hate Thrash Gnosis and I hope it never comes back. Either way, if you do that, I'll let, <laughs> it'll let me know that you guys made it all the way to the end. And I can be very appreciative of you guys watching the whole video. Um, but uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the games. I hope you guys 
saw a little bit of this, maybe you want to start playing it for yourself and see how it feels as well. So let me know again down below how it goes for you. But I'll leave it there for now. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for the next video. So peace out and take care.